I'm good. Saturday. Hey, David. Hey, I'm good. Yeah, hi, Joe. Doing pretty well. Hi, I just wanted to let you know, um, Don had food poisoning, so he's been really sick, but, um, so I'm not sure how long he's going to be able to do a session. Okay. He's making up some schoolwork, so I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's fine. We can go however long he wants. All right. Thanks, he David. Nice to, to talk to you. He only wants to go a half hour. That's fine. Just any time you uh, feel like you want to stop the session, you let me know, Don. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Okay. Piecewise functions. Yeah. The secret to doing piecewise functions is to <laughs> define the right side first. See this piecewise okay. function in three? Yeah. Let's not try to do this first. Let's do this part first. Okay. Okay. So, okay. starting from the left. Mm -hmm. Hold on one moment. Okay. okay. Starting from the left, where does X start? Right there. Um, that would be negative 5. Okay. Is it greater Eight. than, less than, greater than or equal to? Um, greater than or equal to. Well, negative 5. That's correct. Yeah, because it's a black, okay. it's a closed dot. Okay. How about on this end? Um, that's negative 3. Is it less than? Ah, uh, yep, yeah, just less than. Less than three. Okay. So for that domain, mm -hmm. what is y equal to? Oh, uh, y is equal to. Huh. Or let's call it f of x instead of y. Just keeping with their notation. Okay. But you're looking at the y-axis. What is y yeah. equal to right there? Negative 5. And yeah, negative 6. Yeah, negative 5. Yeah. Negative 5 is correct. In other words, yeah. y is equal to negative 5 whenever x is greater than or equal to minus 5 and less than or equal to minus 3. Okay. Okay. Now, the next interval to the right on the x-axis is what? Um, right there. It'd be negative 3. Greater than, yeah, less than or equal to. On the right side? And then negative 1. And what is f of x equal to there? Um, negative 3. Okay. The so next cool. interval? Um, negative 1. Greater than or equal to okay. negative 1, less than? Um, less than positive 1. Okay. What's y equal to? And then y is equal to negative 1. Okay. And finally, the last part of this thing? Um. Oh, that is, that's the only part of it. I'm sorry. I saw these I arrows. Know. I saw these arrows up here, and that just is in indicating the x-axis. Oh, so no, you can There's your function. Cool. And the domain is only from minus 5 to plus 1. Okay. And there's three different values for y in those different domains. Okay. Okay, let's cool. do the same thing here. Okay. Start from the left and start with the right side. Okay. Um... So the first one would be positive 4. So. Oh, start on the x-axis from the left. Oh, from, oh, okay, my bad. So it'd be 0. Okay. Is this a greater than or greater than or equal to sign? Uh, just greater than. Okay. Cool. What is the right side of it? Um, and then it's greater than... Um, less than or equal. Or less than. Less than. Ne oh, positive one. Okay. Positive one. In other words, that little interval right there on the x-axis. Yeah. Zero to one. Okay. Okay. And what's y equal to in that interval? Um, zero. What's y equal to? Oh my bad. Four. 
yeah, four. Okay. Next enter. Okay. Um, and then the next interval would be negative error positive one again. So just one. And then is less than um, x, which is less than three. Okay. Uh, again, x axis only. Forget the y-axis until you finish the interval. So it would be positive 1 for the x-axis. Goes from 1 to 2. So, so 1 to 2. 1 to 2, and the 2 has the less than or equal to. Oh, okay. In other words, see what we're doing here. We're only looking at the x-axis to fill in the right part of this thing. Okay. Okay, there's four intervals. One, okay. two, three, four. The first one goes zero to one, then one to two, two to three, three to four. Okay. And then find the corresponding y value for that interval. But and then the y value. Yeah, okay. don't get confused between the x and the y here. So the okay. third and well, first of all, in that second interval, what is y equal to? Uh, three. Okay. And cool. in the third interval, what is it? Um, here just a sec. Oh, whoops. Okay, um, so the third one would be, the x values would be 2 is less than, um, and then 3. And it's is less, less, less than, than or equal to, because of the closed dot. Okay, what's okay. y equal to in that interval? Um, y is equal to 2. Okay, and finally, there's one more interval. Um, and then the last one would be 1 is less than um, x, which is less than or equal to uh, 3. So what's the interval here? Um, so this would be 3. Oh, 3 and 4. Okay. Yeah, my bad. All right. What's y equal okay. to? And then y is equal to 1. Okay. And that's how you do piecewise, is okay. you concentrate on this. Usually the y value is pretty easy to figure out. It's yeah. getting, a, getting a hold of okay. the x values that most people find difficult. Okay. Cool. So let's graph this function. Okay. And we can do it on my piece of paper here. Okay. Cool. And graphing it's the same thing. Get a handle on the x first. Okay. okay, so so graph the function. So yeah, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so you would do 0, 2 for the first one. Okay, and would be? yeah, let me just finish my lines here. Okay. Okay, 0, 2, where's the closed dot? Um, one's open, one's closed. 0 is the closed, okay. and then 2 is the open. And what does our graph look like in that interval? So it started zero, closed dot, okay, and then add positive two with an open dot. Okay, what's the line, What's the function look like? Um, the function. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, you've given me the interval for x, but now tell me uh, what the y value. In other words, where does it go on the graph? Oh, the y value would be three. So, so it'd be. So it's a horizontal line? Yeah. Okay. In other words, okay. like the other ones we're doing. Okay. Because y is a constant, that means it's a horizontal line. Okay. okay. What's the rest of it okay. look like? Um, and then it'd be 4, 2. 
So it would be a close dot then an open dot. So four and then yeah, over two. So it'd be horizontal, horizontal line. And then it'd be five four. So it'd be um, a close dot at five and then an open or yeah, an open dot at four. At six. Okay. Yeah, and then six and six. Okay. Cool. Okay. About cool. number four. Um, okay, so. Okay, what's my first interval? Okay, so it'd be negative 4, 1. So it'd start as an open circle. Okay, hold on, and then one, go to, hold on one moment. When okay. you're defining a spot on the graph, yeah. start with the x coordinate. So what we start, oh, we'd start at 1. Okay, so okay. where does the first point that I want to make go? Uh, negative 4. At 1 comma negative 4. That's what okay. I say. When you're describing that point, give me the x-coordinate first. When okay. you say negative 4, it sounds like that's the x-coordinate over there. Okay. Okay, so yeah. in other words, that's this point right here is 1 comma negative 4. Is it open or a closed circle? Uh, open. Where's the next point? And then the next point would be 2, negative 6. No. Why? Oh, it would be, would it be huh, negative 4, 2. You got it backwards. Oh, 2, negative 4. Because the x coordinate goes first. Yeah. Is it a closed okay. dot or an open dot? A uh, closed dot. Okay. So all of these are horizontal lines, and they're always going to be if this is just a number. Okay. This isn't always going to be just a number. That can be a function, in which okay. case we wouldn't have horizontal lines. We might have slanted lines, or we might even have parabolas. Okay. Okay. The next dot starts where? Starts where? Um, and then the next one would be 2, negative 6. Okay. Open or closed? Uh, open. Next dot? Um, and then 3, negative 6. Tell me open or closed. Okay, yeah, All close. Right, draw it. Okay, next dot? Um, 3, negative 8, and that'd be open. Um, and then 4, negative 8, and that'd be closed. And then 4, negative 10, and that'd be open. And then 5, negative 10, which would be closed. Guess there's another one over here. Yeah, let me just start yeah. a fresh graph. Let's see. Our x goes from minus six to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And our y values go from minus two to one. Okay. First point. Okay, so the first point would be, um, sorry, it's a little blurry. So it'd be negative six two. Hold on one moment. N okay. You're right, a little smaller. Okay. So negative six what? Uh, negative six negative two. Tell me. And that'd be closed or closed up. Closed. And then negative 5, negative 2, and that'd be open. Okay. 
and then the next one would be negative 5, negative 1, and that would be closed. Hold on a second. My... Okay. Uh, negative 5, negative 1, okay. Yeah, and then that will be closed. And then negative 3, negative 1, and that would be open. Okay, so that's a little different. That's a longer okay. line. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then the next one would be negative 3, 0. And that would be close. And then negative 2, 0, and that would be open. And then the next one would be negative 2, 1, and that would be closed. Um, and then it'd be zero, one, and that'd be open. Good. Cool. Let me read this for a second. Okay. graph it first and then we'll write it. Okay. I think that'll be easier. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's see here. This is the number of team members on the yeah. horizontal axis. Mm -hmm. This is the cost on the vertical axis. Okay. So where's my first dot going to go? Um, so, huh. What's, I don't know, I'm kind of stuck on this. Well, zero to five is the first interval. In other words, as long as oh. you have just five team members, the cost is $180. Okay. And it's 180 up and through 5. Okay. I suppose you could make this an open dot. Okay. Because if you have exactly 5, it's going to cost 180. Okay. And you can't really have 0. No. You're not going to have a team. You're not going to pay anything at all if it's zero. Yeah. So there's the first okay. part of our step function. Where's the next okay. interval? Um, 30. So what's the next point on my graph? Um, 530. It's not 30. 30 plus 180. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it said be 30 and then 180. So 210. Okay. 210. And that is an open dot. Okay. Where's the next point? Um, 240. So. Hold on. Oh, my bad. The next point in this interval. Would it be 0 to, or 5 to 10? No. Or 5 to 6? Oh, 7, 8, 9, Exactly. Ten. $30 per additional player. Okay. So if you have six players, what's the cost going to be? If you have six players, it two, so it would be $240, $240. No, no. With five players, it's $180. Oh, so it would be $210 for six players. So what goes here? Um, closed so, or open? Oh, it would be closed. Okay. That's the way our function is going to look. Notice okay. that if we have five or less, it's going to cost us 180. Okay. If we have six or, you know, you can only have six, so I'm not sure why we're plotting. In other words, you can't have partial people. So no. I would be inclined to plot it like this myself. 
Okay. But they've specifically requested a step function. Yeah. So that wouldn't be a step function. So if you want a step function to model this, we'd have to do this. Okay. Now, it cool. doesn't really make much sense to use a step function here, notice. Mm -hmm. Because you can only have multiples of people, of one. You can't have a part of a person. Yeah. Okay? I tell okay. you a much better real-life model for using step functions mm -hmm. is the age of a person versus the class, the grade they are in. Okay. Think about that for a second. Yeah. From... Hold on. Okay. From zero to six, you're not in anything. No. Okay. But when you get to be six, you go in the first grade. Yeah. But this is a good step function because you can be anything between six and seven and yeah. still be in the first grade. In other words, okay. it doesn't matter whether you're six years old or six and a half years old, you're going to be in the first grade. Uh, yeah. So, Age versus grade level is mm -hmm. a, the, the best step function in real life that I can think of. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. When you're between seven and eight, in second you're grade. in second grade. When you're between eight and nine, you're in the third grade. Okay. So forth and so on. Now, whether I have the closed dot on the correct end or not kind of mm -hmm. depends on the school rules. Okay. In other words, if you're six on September 1st, mm -hmm. then you go in the first grade. But this is the basic picture. Okay. And this makes a lot more sense than this because you can't have a part of a team member. Yeah. You don't really need a step function for that model. Yeah, okay. But you do need a step function for this model where you would be modeling age versus grade level. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's look at number seven. Okay. Okay. All right. And this one is proper also. In other words, you need a step function for this one. Yeah, you do. Okay, so let's see. So it's fucking good. So the horizontal axis is X, and that's the number of hours you parked in the garage. Cost yeah. is the vertical axis, and that's the total cost for parking there. Okay. So. So it start out four dollars per hour. Yeah. With a fifteen dollar daily maximum. So okay. if you go into that garage and you park exactly one hour, mm -hmm. or anything up to that one hour. In other words, from zero to one hour, what is your cost? Nineteen dollars. No, it's four dollars per hour with a fifteen dollar oh. daily maximum. That just means your total charge can't exceed that. Oh, okay. If so only, be if you only go and park for one hour, you're only going to pay four dollars. Okay. Okay. So that okay. point is on the curve. Yeah. And anything from zero to one, you pay four bucks. In other words, if you pull into that parking garage and turn right around and come back out, you get charged four dollars. Okay. Even if you only park in there for one minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the next interval? Um, it would be so eight. Okay. Give me the coordinates. Uh, so it'd be two eight. No. This would is eight. Be, but the first coordinate yeah. I want to draw is not a two. It would be fifteen. 
be a one. A one. Oh, okay. We're going from one to two hours is our next interval. Oh, okay. Yeah. In other words, if you park from one hour and one minute mm -hmm. up to two hours, they're going to charge mm -hmm. you eight bucks. Okay. And that's what this picture says. Yeah. If you park exactly one hour, they're going to only charge you four dollars. But if you go over it by even a minute, you get charged a whole nother four dollars. Okay. 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 So where is our next point? And then our next point would be uh, two to three hours. So it'd be twelve. Okay. Give me the x coordinate first. Um. So. Two twelve. Good. Cool. Open or closed? Um, open, and then close. Where's the next coordinate? Um, and then th three. So two to three hours. So it'd be three to sixteen. Hold on. There. The next coordinate is three comma twelve. Three twelve. In other words, okay. when I'm saying where should I put my dot, that's what I want is an x and y coordinate. Okay. This coordinate is three comma twelve. Okay. 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 And if it's exactly three hours, it's exactly twelve bucks. They don't okay. charge you over. Okay. Where's my next line go? Where's my next um, line go? So it'd be the next would be three to four hours, so it'd be three comma sixteen. The daily maximum is fifteen. So that's it, then, because so you can't go over it. In other words, it would come at 3.15. Okay. See why? Yeah. And then the closed the the close dot comes at 4.15. Okay. In other words, if you're in this time interval from three minutes and, or from three hours and one minute all the mm -hmm. way, in fact, I yeah. can draw this all the way right out here. Okay. I could stay from three hours to 12 hours, mm -hmm. and it would still only cost me $15. Okay. Okay? Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Next page. Okay. Is this a quiz that you took? Uh, no, this is just uh, the first day of homework. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit bigger here. Okay. Okay. Evaluate the function. It's pretty much like what we've been going over. This was two days ago when we did this. Okay. Let me give you a little test. Okay. If f of x is equal to x minus 2, what is f of 3 equal to? Um, 1. Okay. So you know what to do when they put something other than an x in the parentheses. Yeah. Okay? Cool. So, question 1, regarding that function, f of minus 3... Mm-hmm. Looks like you it did, looks like you did it correct. In other words, first of all, you plugged it into this function because we are in this domain. We are less than minus two, mm -hmm. so we plug it into yeah. that. If okay. we wanted f of three, we'd had to plug it into this one mm -hmm. because three is yeah. in this domain here. Yeah, because x is greater than yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. I presume it's the same function that they want all of these evaluated at. Okay, hold on. Let me yeah. spread this out across the top of my screen. Okay. Um, let me just check and see if you did this right. F of okay. minus 2. That's wrong. Is that wrong? Uh-huh. Look at it again. So F of minus so, 2. First of all, decide which interval you're in. Because yeah, yeah. you have to know which interval you're in to know which function to use. Okay. Would it be the top interval? Because... Look, look at it again. 
So negative. Oh, it'd be the bottom interval. Okay. Okay, so it'd be neg so it'd be one. Okay. Go ahead okay. and change that on your paper. Yeah. So the very first step here is to identify which interval it's in. Always. Okay. Just like graphing them, you work from the right to the left. Okay. Okay. So what's okay. three? Um, three would be uh three. Good. Because change, change yeah, it's that. Positive, negative. Change that. Yeah. Okay. okay. What is f of five? Um, five forty is thirty nine. Which interval are we in? Uh, top interval. Oh, no, we're on the bottom interval. So, yeah, it'd be 8. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's another function below that, I guess. I think that's, yeah, that's for 6 through 10. And 5. 5 oh, says five, g eight. of minus 4. Yeah. So, which interval are we on? Um, we're on the top interval. Of this function right here? Oh, uh, that one. Um, okay, so what is it? So it'd be um, zero. Don't make that mistake. It's awful easy to make. This is our function, right? Yeah. So plug in minus four for x. Um, oh, so it'd be minus four plus four. Oh, so it'd be at the opposite. So it'd be 4 plus 4. So right. it'd be 8. In other words, it would be minus a minus 4. And always okay. do these like this. Don't try to do it all in one step. Okay. Just plug it in. Take whatever this is and plug it in in parentheses and then simplify. Okay. Okay? If I do it this way, I can't make a mistake. Yeah. If I try to do it all together, it's real easy to come up with 0 there. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. What is g of minus 1? Okay. Um, g of minus 1. It'd be the f top interval okay. of g of x. So it'd be, uh, let's see, negative. So it'd be five. Good. What okay. is g of zero? Um, and then g of zero would be um. Would that be the middle interval? Yes. So it'd be um. um I don't know about this one. I'm kind of confused on this one. Okay. When you plug in zero for x, there's no x there. Yeah. So oh, it's so it just be zero. No, it's three. three. In other okay. words, g of x is equal to three in that entire interval. Okay. It's equal to three at zero. It's equal to three at one. In other words, okay. this is going to be one of those graphs that has the horizontal line. Okay. Okay? Okay. Which means cool. that no matter what x is, is, as long as we're in that interval, y is equal to 3. Okay? So what's okay. g of 1? Um, okay, so g of 1 would be the middle one again. And then, um, yeah, again, it'd just be 3. Okay. Uh, make sure you change this to g of x up here. Okay, yeah. yeah with the right answer. And okay. then you've got all of these saying f of x, and you've got three different answers for each one, it looks like. Yeah, I was kind of confused on that. Okay, so I could just that's, that. that's fine. Erase all of that and replace okay. it with g of x equals whatever we're deciding it equals here. Okay. Okay. So what is g of 2 equal to? Um, so this one would be the third interval. Okay. So, two, three, four, five, so it would be negative 1. Good. What's g of 5? Um, and then g of 5 would be 
again the third interval said be five. Yep. Okay. So how far do you travel in, oh, hold on a second, let me look at this. Okay. Okay, this is a little different. These aren't horizontal lines. Notice yeah. that we don't have just numbers over here. We have functions. Mm -hmm. Well, what okay. does 55x look like? That's a straight line with a slope of 55 okay going between 0 and 2 okay yeah close dots at both mhm mm so that's what that part of the function looks like mhm mm and then what's it look like from 2 to 5 2 to 5 huh How would you graph this function? Y equals 65x minus 20. Um, you'd start at 65 and then go over 1. Up. No, hold on. Right over one. That's oh, Y so. equal MX plus B format. Oh, okay. So where do I start? Yeah. Negative 20. Okay. Okay. What's my slope? Um, negative 65, or yeah, just 65. Of Positive one. 65, which is steeper yeah. than that slope. Yeah. So I'm going to make it a little steeper, only I'm not drawing it steeper, but you get the picture. I don't have room to yeah. draw it steeper. Now, mm -hmm. where, what part of that line should I erase? Because um, right now it's not a function notice. No. It fails the vertical line test, right? Yeah. So this part of the function has to start right there at 2. Uh-huh. Which means erase this part. Okay. So the function goes like that. Mm -hmm. In other words, the way you do this is you draw the line as you would if it was a regular function. But okay. then you only show the part that where, you know, this is only true when x is greater than 2 and less than or equal to 5. So okay. it's not true down here. But in yeah. order to graph it, it's useful mm -hmm. to use the y-intercept, although you don't really have to do that. Okay. Another yeah. way to graph this would be, and in fact, it shows you that I have the graph wrong. Uh, yeah, I do have the graph wrong. Hold on a second here. Let's, let me redo. Let me redraw this so I got some room to work with here. Okay. Okay. So the first one goes from zero to two mm -hmm. with We'll, we'll call that a slope of 50. Okay. Close dot, close dot. Okay. Where does the next point start? Rather than, I, I'm going to change the way I taught you how to do this. That, that, that wasn't a very good technique. Okay. I, I tried graphing that line and then erasing the part that was between 0 and 2, right? Mm-hmm actually a better way to do it. Where's the first point? Let's go back and do it the way I was showing you how to do that. What's f of 2 equal to? Um, so it would be in 65 this, times. In this interval, yeah. In other words, it would be 65 times 2, which is 130 minus 20, 110. Yeah. So this point right here is mm -hmm. 100. Okay. Because it's 50, it's, excuse me, it's 110. 
In other words, yeah. at the end of two hours, you've gone 110 miles, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this y coordinate is 110. Okay. Okay. And now yeah. the way to find the first point here, wherever that is, is mm -hmm. to plug in two for x. That gives you 110. So we know that the point two comma 110 is right there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now it is true that that has a slope of 65, which is steeper than this slope. So it mm -hmm. goes something like this. Okay. And over here is five, and it's a closed dot. Okay. And that is a picture of our trip. Okay. Another. Let, let me think for a second here. Let's see, what does this say? On a trip, the total distance you travel in x hours is represented by the piecewise function. Okay. So, if I wanted to know how far I traveled in an hour. 55 mm -hmm. miles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, I know, if I want to know how far I traveled in three hours, then I have to find this point right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I don't really have to find it. I just have to plug it into this part of the equation. So how far, yeah. how far would I travel in three hours? So 65 times 3. Or, or better yet, let's answer their question. How, how far do you travel in 4 hours? Okay, so you do 65 times 4 minus 20. Which is 240, it's so that's 240. correct. So if okay. I were to look on my graph, at hour mm -hmm. 4, this point right there would be 4 comma, what is it, 220? Uh, yeah, 220. 240. Or 240, yeah, my bad. So it's 240 right there. Okay. 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 And notice we don't have to add in that distance plus this distance. The, the no. reason this works as a piecewise function is because you can look at the graph and pick any time you want and figure out exactly how much you traveled. You don't have to add two intervals. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In other words, to figure out how, tra how far I traveled in four hours, I merely need to look at that point right there. Yeah. I don't have to add the first two hours to that or anything. Okay. All right. Um, and then graph the function, describe the domain and range. What is the domain of this? For number 13? Yeah, for the drawing I have here. Oh, for this. Um, the domain would be 110. Domain is always the x-axis. Oh, so it'd be... So it'd and be, it's always the, all, all of the possible values that x can be. Okay. What can x be in our problem here? Um, x could be 2 can or be, 5. Can it be 0? Yeah, it can be zero. Can it be one? Yeah. Can it be four and a half hours? Yeah, it can, can be, be that too. Six hours? Mm-hmm. No, can't be six hours. No. Notice, oh, okay. notice they're showing us the domain up here. That's what the domain mm -hmm. is. The domain goes from zero to five. Okay. And that's it. If I had to write domain, how do they have you write domain? Do they have you use interval notation, or do they have you use x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 5? Uh, yeah, just like that. Okay. That's the domain. Okay. What's yeah. the range? The range being the possible y value. Yeah. So 110 to 240. Mm, what about so. down here? Zero to two forty. Okay. In other words, when you just start the trip, you're at zero. Okay. Okay. So okay. the possible distances you can travel are anywhere between zero and two hundred and forty miles. Okay. And that's the range. Okay. Let's look at twelve. Okay. Um. 
Hold on a moment. I'm a little confused here. Uh, this graph, the function, describe the domain and range. Does that apply to 13, 14, and 15? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, not to 11. Okay. No, not yeah, not to okay. 11. Okay, so we don't need to do that for 11. No. Or 12. No. Mm -mm. Okay, so here they're giving us the piecewise function for the cost of ordering X custom shirts. Okay. <laughs> What's the cost of ordering 26 shirts? So it would be the, would it be the first interval? Um, so it'd be 17 times 26 hold plus on, 20. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where does, okay. where does 26 come in the right side of things here? Um, X. Which interval is it? Oh. Um, is it between 0 and 25? No, so that would be the middle interval. Okay. Okay. So how do we figure out the cost? I would say do 1580 times 26 um, plus 20. Okay. If you have a calculator, do that, and that's your answer. Okay. Yeah, here we. Whoops. So, fifteen point eight times twenty six. Uh, four hundred thirty point eight. Okay. So four hundred thirty. Uh, yeah. Point dollars. eight. Point eight dollars. In other words, yeah. four hundred thirty dollars plus. Uh, 80 cents. Um, yeah. From what I'm seeing, your only problem on these is you want to start on the left instead of the right. Yeah. Always start doing. on the right. Always. Okay. It tells you what interval. In other words, first find which interval you're in. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing problems like this or whether you're graphing or whether you're interpreting a graph. Look at the domain okay. first. Okay. Not the range. All right. Okay. So number 13, let me just have a quick peek at this. It looks like you've done these. So yeah. let's see. If X is less than 2 or greater than 2. <laughs> is that the right graph? Um, yeah, I think so. Wait. Where should our demarcation point B. You got it at zero on the x-axis. Yeah. Should be at two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in other words, if I'm going to graph this, first let's figure out our x-coordinates. There's two. Mm -hmm. We only have two conditions. We're either less than two or greater than two. Okay. Okay. Less than 2, the line is defined by y equal minus x. Yeah. What's the slope of that line? So minus x. How would I graph y equal minus x? Um, would you start at negative 1? No, there's no y-intercept. No. The y-intercept is zero, so you start at zero. Yeah. What's the slope? Two. Or it would be, so the slope would be negative x. Slope's negative one. Negative one. In other words, if I write y equal minus x, that's in y equal minus, that's in y equal mx plus b format. It's just yeah. b is zero and m is minus one. Okay. Okay. So that is a line that goes through the origin that has a slope of minus 1, like that. And I'm going to draw okay. it all the way up to that point right there with a closed open circle. Okay. I don't need that right there. In other words, mm -hmm. that's what that looks like. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. to the right of 2, 
And let's not worry about whether where the closed dot goes yet. Okay. But when x is equal to 2, what is y? So if x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2? What is it? Negative Figure two. it out. Uh, what is y of, uh, what is f of 2? f of uh, 4. Negative 4. Negative 4. So mm -hmm. when I go to plot this part of the graph, mm -hmm. I'm not going to the y-axis. I'm going to start right here. Okay. And I know that when x is equal to 2, y is negative 4, just like that. Okay. It's a closed dot because it's greater than or equal to 2. Yeah. Okay. What's the slope, okay. what's the slope on this line? Uh, the slope would be... Uh, 1 minus 6. Okay. Let's review y equal mx plus b. This is the most important format for the equation of a line. Yeah. Okay. In our case, we have y equal x minus 6. What's the slope on that line? X. M so is the slope. M. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what you're looking at. Okay. So what is it? So the slope would be. What's the coefficient? Would it be one? Yeah, the coefficient of yeah. x is the slope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just because it's okay. not written doesn't mean it's not there. So okay. the slope is one, meaning I got to go up one over one, up one over one. Well, that's a forty-five degree angle, pretty much. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the way I would graph it. Okay. And it goes on forever because it wasn't limited, and it goes on forever on both sides. In other words, it looks like this. Okay. What's the domain of this? So the domain would be... Read it off the graph. Yes, yeah, it'd be two. What does the domain mean? Uh, the x value. All the allowable x values. Okay. All of the allowable x values. Oh, uh, so it'd be x, all real numbers. Yeah. Yeah. X is a member of all reals. No exceptions. Okay. 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 Now read the range off of the graph. What can okay. y be? What can y be? Um, this is the y axis. This is the x axis. Four, two, zero. Negative 2, negative 4. Only read the vertical coordinates. So just negative 2, negative 4. Can it be anything in between those? Um, About here. Yeah, you can. Okay. Can it be minus 1? Um, yeah. Yeah, right here. It's minus yeah. 1. Can it be zero? Yeah, it can be zero. Can it be a million? Yes. Okay, so how do I define the range? So all real numbers again. No. Can it be minus five? Yeah. No, it can't. No. There's a bottom on this thing. Yeah. It can't be any it's not anything lower than that. Yeah. This is not the same as the x axis. The x axis goes horizontally from negative infinity way over here to positive infinity way over there. Okay. The y yeah. axis goes from the, I don't see any points below that at all. No. So the y looks to me like it's got to be greater than or equal to minus 4. Okay. It can be minus 4. It is minus 4 when x is 2. Mhm. Mm but every value above that it can be. Okay. And it's important that you see that on this graph. In other words, the best way to determine range and domain is by reading the graph. But okay. people have a lot of trouble with it. I'm not sure why. When you're reading domain, just read all of these possible x values. Mm -hmm. The x values go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And when you're reading yeah. range, read all of the possible y values. Okay. So, let me give you a test on that principle. Okay. This is a parabola. Yeah. 
whose equation is y equal x squared. What is the domain and range? Okay, so the domain would be all real numbers. Good. And then the range would be um, x is greater than or equal to 2. Not x. Not x. So domain two. range is y. Yeah. X is domain. Range is y. So it would be y is something. Uh, y is greater than or equal to x squared. Read the values on the y-axis. What's this point right there? Zero. Okay. So, uh, zero. When you give a domain and a range, you don't give it as a function of another variable ever. Yeah. In other words, you can't say y is greater than x. That's no. not an answer for range. Read no. the chart. What can y be? Y could be zero. Zero to, like, million. Okay, so y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. That's all you have to do, is read the possible y values. Okay. Okay? Okay. If I had a function that was like this, mm -hmm. now what's the range? Y is greater than or equal to 3. Hold on. Get your direction right. I mean, less than or equal to 3. Okay. Okay. That's always the best way to handle domain and range. Even though you yeah. can figure them out algebraically, and a lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot of times you can, there's also a lot of times where you yeah. can't figure them out algebraically. Uh, okay. Let's do one more. Let's do 14. we got three minutes here. Okay. And graph the function and describe its domain and range. So let's graph. Tell me where to start. Tell, tell me where to put my first point, whether it's an open, closed, whatever. Okay, so your first point would be at 4. Okay. And it would be open. Okay. And what value goes there. Oh, and then... In other words, where do I put the first point? Say so you put the first point Plug in one. Plug in that into this. Oh, it's 12. Okay. So this point okay. is an open circle and it's on my graph, right? Yeah. Now, do I need to work left or right? Um, to plot this part of the graph. You'd have to work left. Right, because we're dealing with, I mean, correct, because <laughs> x is less than 4. What's the slope yeah. on that line? Um, and then the slope would be, it would just, oh, so 12 over 1. So slope is always the coefficient of the x term. If so it'd be four. function, no, we're dealing with this one right here. Oh, okay. So what's the slope on that? Y equal X plus 8. Y equals X plus So Y equals, it'd be 12. Okay. Y equal MX plus B. Yeah. What's the slope in that equation? M. M is the slope. Yeah. What is M in this equation right here? 1. That's the slope. Okay. 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 Just you, 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 when you don't see it, you don't see it, but it's there. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I need to go to the left with this line mm -hmm. at a slope of 1. Okay. Well, that means it's going to go through this point also, so I'll draw it like this. Okay. And it goes forever because they don't put any lower limit on that thing. Mm -hmm. That's at 8. It's open because okay. it's just less than 4. Yeah. Okay, so where's the next point I'm going to put? Um, and then the next point would be... Would it be closed, open, and what coordinates? Um, it'd be four... Oh, so it'd be... 
Yeah, so let's start at four again. Okay. And then... Closed or open? And for what? Four and... One. Okay, plug in four into so, this equation. That's your starting so point. Sixteen. Sixteen minus four. Minus four, which well, is twelve. So okay. that first point is on top of that first point. Turns okay. that open circle into a closed circle. And now okay. how do I graph the rest of this line? Um, and then you would... What's the slope on this line? This slope again would be... Not again. It's a different function. Yeah, it would be 12 as the slope. The slope is M. What is right. M? Yeah, M. What is M on that? And then, so, what? M would be 4. Okay, that's the slope. Okay. Don't make it harder than it is. Okay. It's pretty easy. It's whatever yeah. the coefficient of that is, is the slope. This is minus okay. 1, this is plus 1, that's plus 1, that's 4, that's plus 2, minus 1. Okay. So, is all we have to do is draw a line moving to the right that has a slope of 4. Means I've got to go okay. up 4 over 1, so that line looks like that. Okay. Cool. Okay. What's the domain? Okay. So the domain would be all real numbers. What's the range? And then the range would be y is... Hold on, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, you get good. Um, so y is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, read this graph. Okay. If what, you, if what you said was true, then there wouldn't be any y values below 4. Yeah. So it'd be y is less than or equal to 4. Hold on. That would be. Figure out what y can't be. That's always the best way to do domain and range. Yeah. What can y not be? When you look at that curve, what can y not be? Y can't be anything like above 12. Really? Because it's 12 right there. It's 20 up here. It's 100 up there. Down here, it's minus 50. Huh. All real numbers. Negative All infinity real numbers, yeah. to positive infinity. Okay, because it just keeps going in either direction. Exactly, exactly. And I'm only concerned about the y values. Okay. In other words, no matter what, I can find a y value anywhere on the number line. Okay. All right. Let's stop there. Okay. And uh, let's see.